Um, just checking quickly, have uh, Ben or Greg joined at this point? All right. Um, so we do have eight of 11. We are at quorum. Chris, when you're ready, uh, we can get things kicked off. OK. Um, welcome, everybody. So uh, uh, we have the action item reviews, um, including a brief update from Dave on the white paper. Um, that's actually more of a top level thing. I think uh, Dave wanted a few minutes to cover where they're going with that. Um, then we have uh, uh, the Aroha proposal um, to do a final review and uh, take a vote. Um, <clears throat> pardon me, we had the, uh, the presentation last week, and so people have had hopefully a, a week to think about it. Um, we did not, I gather, I, I apologies for having to drop last week, but there was this hurricane, <laughs> just minor detail. Uh, on my end, and I had to go pick up my parents. Uh, so we have the Java chain code demo that I think we did not get to last week. Um, <clears throat> and so uh, um, we will have that. Um, Arnaud wants to update on uh, uh, some edits, I think, to the uh, code of conduct that people have highlighted. And, uh, and then um, we had intended to have uh, Vipin present his uh, uh, update on the, the HIP uh, numbering scheme, but I think he's uh, absent today. Uh, he had a conflict. So we'll push that, I think, to next week. Uh, and then we'll have the working group update. Is there anything else that anybody would like to add to the agenda? OK, let's get going. So December Hackfest. Um, Todd, where do we stand with that? Yeah, so uh, uh, also just really quickly, uh, Ben and Greg have also joined, so we have 10 of the 11 now. Um, so we'll move quickly through this action item review. December Hackfest, I think we're still looking at uh, December 5th and 6th, uh, right before the member summit in, in New York. Um, we have a couple potential offers of space, uh, but nothing firm yet. So if anyone on the line uh, has office space that they'd be willing to offer up uh, December 5th and 6th in New York, definitely get in touch with me. Uh, and then we can start firming something up uh, for the TSC to review. Uh, any questions? This is, this is Jared from BNY. We can assist you if you want to connect offline. I'm sorry, could you say that one more time? This is Jared from BNY Mellon. Uh, we may be able to get you some office space if you want to connect offline. Great. Uh, I will connect with you after the call. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Thanks. Uh, any other questions on December Hackfest before we move on? All right. Sounds good. Um, the next item is the uh, wiki migration. In the call last week, uh, people felt comfortable to move forward with uh, wiki.hyperledger.org. Uh, a lot of that information um, started to get migrated, which is fantastic. And so the plan was to leave that and to continue to build from there. Uh, the wiki that is currently on GitHub, we have restricted um, the editing access down substantially. So at this point, any future edits that you have in your work groups or in general, please do on wiki.hyperledger.org. Uh, and so we'll continue building that out. Uh, any questions there before we move on? Cool. Uh, and then the last one, um, and I don't know if Brian's on, but um, so we did boot up the test instance for uh, Discourse. Uh, it's at discuss.hyperledger.org. Um, and there were a few emails around this, kind of the reasoning behind that. Uh, so we, are, we currently are in an evaluation stage to use that as a platform. Uh, no firm decision has been made yet, but we want the technical community to go in, uh, poke around, kick the tires, uh, and see what they think of it as a potential tool. Um, so please head over to discuss.hyperledger.org uh, and set up an account if you have not already. Uh, and uh, over the next week, provide your feedback, the good and the bad on that, uh, either in discourse or on the mailing list. And just one quick question, someone had uh, raise the question if they can use LFID to log in. Uh, currently, it's not possible, but assuming we move forward with this as uh, a, a platform that we'll use long term, uh, in the paid version, we can uh, install a plugin to allow for that. 
Any questions? So I, uh, go ahead, Chris. Yeah, on on this on on the discourse, um, uh, which is it, it's really replacing the email, right? I mean, we we obviously have a problem with Slack where we're you know hitting the ten thousand limit. We can't afford to pay for it. They won't give us a free license because we're five hundred um, uh, one six. Yep. Rather, and um, uh, and so. But somebody asked, I think it was on the mailing list, whether or not we're getting rid of Slack. And I think the answer to that is it doesn't have to be the, the case. The, the concern, of course, is that you know we're, we're doing things and we're making decisions and we have things that we probably want to be documented. And so we should be using something a little bit more you know, archivable, if you will, than uh, Slack. But of course, Slack doesn't have threaded uh, discussions either. Um, and so... Uh, I think, you know, the answer is we should probably keep Slack around for the, you know, the back and forth of negotiating, you know, uh, or, or just chatting about, uh, you know, some, some tasks that people are doing or you know, for questions and answers. But for longer running, you know, technical discussions that need to be threaded where people want to be able to go back and, and see what was discussed and so forth, it's probably the case that we want to use something like this course um, uh, rather than Slack for those kinds of questions. So the, the, the challenge I see, Chris, is that, um, I, I, so first of all, I fully agree that would be great, but the challenge I see is that it's going to require discipline for people to move important kind of big conversation over to the mailing list. Um, I'm not sure, I'm not sure that this will do that. I, I, I don't think, I'm comfortable saying we shouldn't use Slack because, like you said, there's there's going to be kind of dynamic conversations about certain things where it's totally appropriate. At the same time, it is a path of least resistance in, in, in the way our community works right now. So I, I think we'll have we'll be slower to have the conversations move to the appropriate places that we don't do that. So I don't know what the answer is, but um, any suggestions? Are welcome. Do we have an meeting? There's a lot of background noise, and and Greg, you were getting cut out a lot. As a result, um, but I, I agree it's going to require a certain degree of discipline. I was thinking, you know, uh, that you know there may be some things we can do to integrate um, uh, disc discourse with Slack, so that uh, you know maybe you know at least we're we're flagging that conversations are going on there, so that people are aware of it. Or I I, I don't know what I mean. We should we should definitely. You know, sort of explore this, but you know, the the reality of it is, we have almost three thousand people in Slack right now. Um, I think it's like twenty eight or twenty nine hundred, um, and many of them are active. You know, there's at least you know a hundred or more people on any given day yakking away. And um, the sad reality is, is that we only have about you know three or four days of history. Um, before it falls off the edge of the world, and um, you know, it's it's. I, I found it awkward, even you know, I was traveling, and then I tried to catch up, and I was like, "Whoops, can't go back that far," you know. So, this is uh, hey, Chris. This is this is Brian. Um, so, uh, I definitely would love to see if discourse is um, a uh, an appealing alternative to email, and potentially by being an appealing alternative, helps draw some of the conversations from Slack over to email. Um, what I think we will uh, also want to do is explore alternatives to Slack. Um, uh, IRC is not quite there. There's been suggestions of Rocket Chat <coughs> not list to check out. Um, uh, so let's let's get through the discourse uh, test and and let it find its, its kind of footing and we'll see what moves there and then and then we can take a look at Rocket Chat. Okay. So this is Arno. If I may just add a couple of thoughts on this. I mean, you know, my, my observation with the, the biggest issue with Slack right now is that although it's helpful for people to be able to get in touch, you know, live with somebody, which I think is, you know, very uh, worthwhile in some cases, what I'm seeing is, you know, we see patterns of new people who are trying to use Fabric, for instance, and fail the same way again and again and ask the same question, but they don't even have the chance of looking for an archive to see if that question hasn't been answered before, right? So that's unfortunate, and I think we would gain from having something that's archived and 
a bit structured so that people can say, hey, has anybody faced that situation before? Oh yeah, here it is. Yeah, that, that is definitely a case, although again, I, I keep reminding people, you know, if you see the same question over and over again, put it on Stack Overflow and answer it yourself. Um, but, uh, yeah. Um, <clears throat> and actually, uh, you know, I, I, I actually don't, I mean, the Stack Exchange, is that, uh, is there a free version of that, or is that only a paid tool? Which, which tool? Stack Exchange. We Apple. use that on uh, other projects, and it, it is not as great uh, as it seems. People yeah. really like to build their uh, rep on the main network of sites, so we we just didn't get the, the traction. It may be different for this community, but in my experience, it's a little island that gets ignored. Well, there is um, there there are hyperledger tags on um, Stack Overflow, and um, you know we should we should use them. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, okay. So I think we've beaten that one to death. But you know, again, if people have good ideas and are familiar with other tools uh, that we haven't tried and would like to suggest, please do feel free to do so. Um, probably the best way to do that is to send a note to the mailing list, uh, to the um, to the TSC mailing list, and then you know, we'll, we'll give it a try. Um, okay. Um, or that. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, okay, so next up is Dave. Dave wanted a few minutes to talk about the feedback that we've gotten on the uh, the white paper. Dave. Okay, Chris. Yeah, I'll try to keep this short, but um, yeah, it's been a couple of weeks now since we had our, our white paper uh, walkthrough, and uh, of course, you know, that was some, some really, really good feedback from the community, which is exactly what we're looking for. And, um, you know, I just want to give everyone an update, you know, what, what, what's been going on since then. And, you know, we've, we've been holding a couple of uh, working group meetings since then, and, um, you know, we, we we talked through, you know, do we call it a white paper, do we not call it a white paper, um, you know, uh, we we obviously need to have an introduction section that, that sets the expectations of what's in here, um, you know, we, there, we, we definitely heard the message that, you know, that we're, we're now the reality is, and, and, and the direction we're heading here is that the Hyperledger um, project is, an, you know, this migration towards this umbrella organization for, for different blockchains. And, uh, and so that should be incorporated into the white paper. And, um, you know, and we had kind of going back and forth, you know, some, some really good questions around that and how we should best that. And, um, I mean, you know, some of the things that we, we really wanted to to do is, you know, make sure that we have a clear view of what the purpose and uh, and the objectives of this of the white paper should be. And you know, we discussed a couple of them. Um, you know, is this our should we be really looking to capture the concepts of the umbrella organization and clarify what it means? You know, what's our vision? Should we include a vision of where we see the Hyperledger project in one, two, four years from now? And, you know, making sure that we have a very clear set of objectives around what we want the, 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 the white paper to cover. And, uh, and you know, to that end, um, we, we, we are looking for a little bit more feedback, especially around the, the umbrella uh, organization concept. And, you know, one of, one of the big questions there is, you know, like, how, how do we reconcile the, the new umbrella organization vision to the original objective uh, that that formed the Hyperledger project to begin with, you know, we, where we were, we were looking to establish standards so that distributed application developers can de develop their apps to the broadest customer use, customer base. Um, and, uh, and, you know, are we, are we trying to prevent fragmentation or are we embracing it? Now, we have some we don't think that we're embracing fragmentation, but um, you know, these are the. I think these are some of the questions that people 
may have in their mind when they're thinking umbrella, you know, we're going to have this uh, blockchain stack and that one and this one and that one. And what does it mean? And, you know, are we, are we actually, you know, is our four-year vision that, that we will continue to see this? Or do we see them consolidating? And maybe they're consolidating around specific industries and use cases, but we're going to see two or three. So, you know, there's some real fundamental uh, points and, and important information that we think should be captured in here. Um, so, you know, and, and a lot of, you know, what I'm just describing here, you know, it's in our, in our uh, working group meeting minutes. So I encourage anyone to go on and take a look, um, see what, what, what we've drawn up there. And, uh, and, you know, so our strategy to get more feedback, particularly around, uh, you know, the, the vision and, and the concepts around the umbrella organization, you know, we've invited, uh, and, uh, um, you know, Brian Bellendorf, he's, uh, he, he's agreed to attend our next working group meeting. Um, Richard Gendel Brown, again, you know, great thought leaders in this space. He's agreed to, to attend our next working group meeting as well so we can talk through some of this. Uh, and, and, you know, we would like to open up this meeting to, to more people as well to, to get their uh, input and feedback because this is, you know, very, very important existential <laughs> type of uh, questions uh, that, that we want to make sure that we're, we're being, uh, that we're addressing. And, you know, so after we have a couple of these sessions with our thought leaders in this space, then, you know, we're going to come up with a, a a short list, hopefully three or four, you know, I, I gave a couple of samples that we've discussed um, about what the objectives are. Make sure that everyone, you know, agrees these are the things that we want to cover in the paper, possibly even have a vote on it so that we <laughs> of the POC members to say, okay, yes, we want to, we want to clarify the vision of Umbrella and we want to include, um, you know, this future vision of where we see things uh, in Different time frames in the future, uh, and then and then once once it's clear that everyone agrees that these are the, the topics that need to be covered, then we'll you know we'll do what we need to do best. Whether it's renaming the, the white paper, you know, ripping out the architecture section if it appears to be too closely aligned to you know one implementation under incubation or the other. Um, so yeah, so that's just a quick dump. Uh, I just want to let people know, you know, we've, we've kind of gone silent for a little while. I want to make sure everyone understands we are thinking through this. We think that we have a, a great opportunity to, to add a lot of clarity to to the shift from uh, from what the original sort of vision was, and, and when we, when we first launched the Hyperledger project, where uh, you know we we heard that you know we would be coming up to this difficult stage where some groups may want to stick and some may leave because we're heading down this one direction and not, you know, adopting something else. You know, that, that's shifted now. So let's, uh, let's we, we think we can add a lot of clarity, get, get that view captured into uh, a paper of some sort, and, and that's our, our, our plan going forward. So what we'll be doing next is, um, again, we've, we've got this meeting scheduled. We're going to have Brian and Richard um, participate as well. Um, will be I'll put out on Slack or through the email uh, additional information so others can join in, much like we did with the white paper, and uh, and and get that feedback so that we can uh, agree on a set of objectives and move the paper forward. And that's Dave, my when, message. <laughs> Dave, when when is the next meeting? So our our, our working group we, meetings are every Wednesday, 1 p.m. New York time, and uh, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, so that's when uh, the next meeting is going to be held. Okay, that's wonderful. That's 1 p.m. or 1 a.m. I should say in China. <laughs> yeah, I know Brian's going to be in Singapore as well, but you know he's a busy guy. But he he recognizes. Uh, uh, well, important. I'm not sure, Brian. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's tough. Yeah, just uh, if you wouldn't mind sending the details to the to the list. Uh, Super, or maybe Slack. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, and I don't know if you know Hart or Mick or uh, Morelli or Ram or anyone. If you guys have anything else you wanted to add, I might have missed. But um, no, I think that was great, Dave. Um, thanks for for bringing that up. Um, yeah, I guess we're we're looking for feedback on what should the focus of the white paper be. So uh, we'd love to hear yeah. uh, 
what, what lots of people in this meeting think and have to say. And, and, um, and I, Dave, I see that you know, that version two is up. Does this incorporate the all the latest feedback, or is there a newer version? That no, it, it does not. So this is the version 2.0 draft is the the pre walkthrough version. And again, yeah, before we we you know we ripped out the architecture section or added in this new section, we really wanted to make sure that we understood. So what you see there right now is that's is the pre walkthrough. Right. Okay. So um, I'll give. Well, I, I, I want to. I want to say something a little stronger than than Hart's comments. Hart, you know, Hart and Dave are, are being tactful in saying, you know, we want feedback on this. I think one of the things we want is a commitment from the TSC that this is a set of objectives uh, for the white paper. Um, that uh, it, it's. It, it, I, I'll express that you know we're six months in and not really quite sure. Uh, more than six months in now. Uh, and still not quite sure what the intent was of the white paper, and that that seems like a problem. So getting a commitment to what we need to deliver seems um, like the most important thing. Okay. Hi right, guys, um, this is Jared. Um, so first off, can someone send me a PDF of this because I can't access the box uh, from work. Hey Jared, uh, uh, Dave, here, yeah, I'll send you a copy. <laughs> right. um, so, so which is why I haven't uh, given too many comments so far. far. Um, I do think that regardless of what happens, you know, there is this architectural section you're talking about. Um, I can understand why that might become a, t a touchy subject, but um, if the decision is to kind of move it out of kind of front and center and, and have kind of more of a, an overview, kind of hyperledger as a vision, where everything is going type of thing, I do think it's still worthwhile to have kind of an appendix with the architecture details, um, and it could be of multiple different architectures, it doesn't have to just be a fabric. So that's kind of a point of contention. But I do think it's useful for people, um, you know, to, to be able to get kind of a, a flavor of, of what the kind of different projects are and how they're built up. So that's kind of my only feedback with my very, you know, limited knowledge. Yeah, that's, that's good, Jared. In fact, you know, that was definitely one of the takeaways. People would like to see a white paper for each of the uh, uh, blockchain stacks under incubation, and that, you know, the, the, this paper could reference those for, for details on those. Yeah. yeah, that sounds great. Because I mean, I think part of you know, part of what will come out of this, uh, I think, um, you know, there'll be some kind of where does hyperledger go? Uh, you, know, you mentioned things like do we start combining codes? Do we want to you know have less kind of a uh, less fresh landscape? You know, um, I do think it'll be helpful to start seeing you know kind of how things are built up and, and you know where one might be better than another. Um, although I, I do suspect that kind of over time, eventually a bunch of projects will just kind of stagnate and die, and you'll be left with one or two that you know are, are you know have the greatest community. Okay, great. All right. Well, thanks. I know we want to get onto the the hip uh, Aurora, and so um, yeah. Again, we'll just put out some uh, emails and Slack, and and hope hope to see uh, members uh, joining in. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Just a real quick question. Um, so, uh, uh, where, for, first off, uh, where is the white paper draft, uh, or where did you kind of publish an update to it? I wasn't quite sure. I thought. Yeah. So, so right now everything is still on the old wiki. Um, actually, Mick, I think started migrating some of our our meeting notes, but the uh, the link to the Google Doc uh, is in in the in the old wiki. So, if you just go to the white paper working group, uh, you'll see all that all the links. It's also in the new okay. wiki. And then, a lot of okay. stuff is on the new wiki. Okay. And then, um, where would you prefer comments before next week's meeting on the document? Um, do you prefer it as comments or notes in the wiki? Do you prefer it on, um, you know, one of the mailing lists? Do you prefer it on a particular Slack channel? Um, yeah. So, go ahead, Dave. I, what I was going to say is, Brian, the first thing we need to do is to establish what the set of objectives are. So I think what we're looking for you is not comments on the document. The, the comments and the feedback that we got a couple of weeks ago was that we thought we were going to get fix this sentence, modify this section kind of things. Um, and the feedback that came back to us was, wait, should we cover the broad objectives of the organization? Should there even be an architecture section? So I think what we need from you in the short term is what do we want people to take away from this paper, from the white paper? 
And that's yeah. the feedback we have to establish before we start talking about uh, the actual document itself. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Nick here. Um, we we really just we need to figure. Or sorry. Okay, got it. Yep. Hey, so, um, you, you know, who are, who are the intended audience? Uh, what is the purpose? What is the primary purpose? What are the secondary purpose uh, for, for the document? Right. I mean, we need to make sure we are all aligned uh, with, you know. What the the primary and secondary purposes are of this white paper, and what the message uh, that we want to convey uh, to the primary audience, right? So we need to have clarity at that level because I think um, we need alignment at the very highest level of what we want to achieve with this. Right. So so here, right. so, I agree. I think um, you know it would be worthwhile. I think to at least start a discussion. I was going to say discuss it out on the discuss you know that hyperledger, but I would be afraid that we would lose that. Um, so the question I was going to actually ask Rai and Todd is, if we take stuff to discuss now uh, to discourse now, are we going to lose that, or can we migrate it to whatever the paid? I, I wouldn't presume that we wouldn't lose it. Um, so uh, I, I, I would I would be cautious about. Doing something there that we really don't want lost. Just yet. Um, just like on the wiki, we wanted to make sure we had the freedom to be able to wipe it if we needed. Um, before yeah, that, so now, now we can wipe it. Yeah, thanks, Brian. So I would, I would just suggest we start a discussion on the mailing list. Then, I mean, I think it's it's worthwhile to at least start having people get their thoughts out on paper and going a little bit back and forth about the merits and demerits of whatever. We're thinking so that when we do have the meeting on Wednesday, we're more sort of clean up rather than you know just getting and starting to air the different positions because I, I I just don't see if, if we're if we're only starting to have the conversation uh, in the call on Wednesday then I don't think we're going to get necessarily to the right. and would we prefer to have that conversation on the PSP mailing list or the technical discuss or on discuss? Um, pick one. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's do it on the TSC. Um, okay. This has been kind of a TSC um, topic for the last yep. few days uh, or the last few weeks, and uh, um, yeah, I think I think I think we'll have the highest quality conversation there. So exactly. I will write up exactly what what people have asked for here. I will try to push that out long before next week's meeting. Um, uh, not sure I can get. This time today, but um, know that uh, I know that, that having uh, several days uh, to to have some conversation on this ahead of that meeting would be highly productive. So um, yep. I'll do that. Great, thanks, Brian. Hey, uh, hey, uh, hey, Chris. This is Morali. I think just extending what Ram was saying. Other than the Wednesday's meeting, it'll be good. Maybe in the members' meeting, you know, if they come up with a vision, you know, maybe that's the other opportunity where. The vision is aligned right from the top. From the members meeting, or maybe I missed. We have a members meeting in uh, December, right? Or bring it up to the board oh, 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 and oh, oh, have it aligned yeah, from no, a board perspective too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah, I, I just, um, yeah, yeah, I def definitely think it's something we can add to the agenda item there when we talk to, to folks about, especially because the question will come up, how does the umbrella vision reconcile with the need right. to um, drive to a common, common to standards and a common vision and a stable platform to build on top of? Totally appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, I will say that I did get the board's, um, the governing board's uh, consent and input on the umbrella document um, before publishing it uh, and, uh, and and so I think we can consider you know many of the concepts in that paper to be solid enough um, so the question is really you know about implementing it and, and what's the right way and I, I certainly want to keep them informed but I feel like I feel like we've got the high level sign off um, and and let's make it a topic of conversation for the members of the meeting okay all right I think We've beaten that horse to death. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, next up, uh, Taki Masan, uh, Aroha. So uh, we we had the review of the proposal, and then I had to drop, so we couldn't take a vote. Um, 
hopefully people have had a chance to think about what um, was presented last week and um, our, I don't know if, if we need to have a, a refresher. I know she and I think you weren't on. Um, uh, maybe uh, Hakeem was on if you could just sort of do a, just a, a very brief um, uh, synopsis and then we can probably proceed to a little bit. Yeah, it sounds I can do a quick uh, overview. How do I share my screen, or does Todd have to give me the, uh, <coughs> the rights for this? Yep, one moment. OK. OK, great. Uh, it's, like it's working, right? Everyone can see my screen now. Uh, so I'll just do a quick, uh, I don't know, five minute overview of the uh, proposal, uh, Iroha. Uh, so this is a uh, proposal for a, uh, a C++ uh, based uh, blockchain platform uh, and also uh, related uh, libraries for iOS, Android, and uh, web. Uh, it's a co-sponsor project uh, from my company, uh, Soremitsu, uh, also co-sponsored by uh, Cho-san from Hitachi and Inaba-san from uh, NTT Data and also Mark, uh, the CEO of uh, Kobe, uh, who are also uh, members. Hitachi is uh, also a premier member, and uh, Inaba-san, I don't think he's online, but uh, he's also the technical steering committee. Uh, so this is a uh, modern C++ uh, project. We uh, try to use uh, C++14, uh, and uh, for cryptography, we use uh, Twisted Edwards Curve and SHA-3. Uh, which is a slightly better performance than uh, SHA-256. Uh, we also have a new consensus algorithm called Sumiragi, and we uh, tend to use Java-based uh, smart contracts. Um, another uh, feature is instead of having uh, everything defined in smart contracts or in chain code, uh, we also have uh, some standard transaction types to make uh, common use cases simple. And uh, we have a I've been working on a draft of a specification which is on GitHub, and uh, if you have time, I, uh, I suggest looking over it some. But different transaction types are explained, and there's some details about the consensus algorithm uh, there as well. Uh, so why? Uh, so there's some resources here. So why iter? Uh, so this is a way to bring in uh, C++ developers and Twitter. Until now, there hasn't been any. Uh, you know, kind of C++ based project. Also, we have been focusing on user interface uh, development and application design. So we have uh, libraries for iOS, Android, and JavaScript. Uh, we're also working with several use case partners here in Japan. Uh, so some holdings, uh, they're one of the three largest um, insurance companies, uh, casualty insurance companies in Japan. Uh, there's a CoinDesk article about our project uh, two weeks ago, or last week or so. And uh, <coughs> they're, they have about 10 people, uh, or over 10 people working on a project using Iroha, uh, studying uh, insurance use cases. And uh, we also have a research project with the University of Tokyo, University of Aizu, and uh, International University of Japan uh, to do, I don't know, uh, study local currencies and uh, economic effects uh, with that. That's using uh, Iroha as well. Uh, there are about 15 people, different these different companies uh, working with uh, us, uh, both on development and also on studying uh, use cases. And there's going to be uh, the first a large field test uh, with Iroha uh, in November. And uh, we currently also have uh, live system development uh, underway, uh, but that you know that will, will be later next year. Um, so the point is, is this is a it's not just my company uh, working on this, but it's also a multi-party uh, effort. It's just Japan, but we also have Koldu, uh, an Israeli company, uh, working with us as well. So why uh, why accept this now? Why not uh, next year or two years? Uh, the reason is uh, Hyperledger as a project is still young, and so it's it's our opinion that uh, this is a good time to bring in many new ideas uh, when the project hasn't yet solidified. Uh, so in the future, maybe in two or three years, I expect the project, uh, Hyperledger as a project, to be more uh, solid and to have less fragmentation. But at the beginning, uh, there, 
you know, there should be lots of ideas coming in. And uh, that's really what the incubation stage is about. Uh, once, you know, project reaches maturity, it can uh, graduate uh, to active. And then I think eventually uh, the long-term goal uh, really will not be to have many different fragmented projects in Hyperledger, but rather just to have a, kind of a set of components that have been well tested and uh, can interoperate with each other. And that's the type of thing we want to work towards, or the vision we want to help uh, create. And one of the ways we can do that is by taking our mobile app and uh, web libraries and uh, expanding them, not just to work with uh, Idroha, but also with uh, you know, Fabric and Sawtooth Lake as well. So uh, that's the uh, very uh, simple uh, rundown of the project. Uh, there's lots of details uh, written in the, uh, in the proposal and then also uh, in the very, very rough draft of, uh, kind of the white paper specification that I'm working on. So, uh, uh, so that's, uh, I think, all I'll talk for now. So, are there any questions? Someone's got quite a bit of background noise. Um, if you could mute, that would be helpful. Um, I, uh, this is Mike. I have a couple of questions on it. Um, uh, I guess the first thing is, you know, this looks like a great piece of code. Um, and just looking through the repository a little bit um, looks pretty great. Um, but one, one of the things, uh, you talked a couple of times about kind of modularity, um, and it looks like the APIs are pretty clean between things, but there's an awful lot of functional dependence between them. Um, do you see these, the pieces that you're building as something that could be pulled out independently from Aroha and, and reused? Or how do you see that, you know, what is, what's your objective for the modularity you've talked about? Uh, thanks for the question. So, uh, yeah, the current draft of Idroha is very, very rough, and what we want to do is make everything less dependent on each other, so using things like, uh, well, uh, using C++ templating more, and then in the future, I think if we uh, need to interoperate uh, at a higher level, we can use things like ERPC, but that's a, it's a little bit, we kind of don't want to do that. Uh, we can also interprocess communication in other ways. Uh, in C++, but uh, I think, yeah, for now we want to try to encapsulate things more with the templates. Uh, so that's, there's lots, lots that needs to be done uh, with that uh, at the current stage. Any other questions? Um, again, a kind of a question about maturity level, um, and, and um, to what ex to what extent has the current code base been tested, and how would you describe its maturity? The uh, current code base is uh, still very rough. It's been tested uh, somewhat with some uh, with some of the use case partners here in Japan, uh, and from that we've gotten feedback and are expanding things uh, more. But yeah, it's still a very rough project. But uh, I think that's also an advantage because bringing it into an incubation stage at this level uh, can help it to be able to guide the development in a better way and also maybe use some better development practices if you can get some uh, suggestions on that. So it's uh, still a very uh, rough and I would say immature project. It's definitely not uh, at the active stage, uh, but for incubation, I think it makes sense to try to take some of the good ideas here and uh, help them reach the full potential. Um, hey, this is Hart here. Um, so I really like your vision of sort of the modular components. Um, I just had a quick question. Um, at what point in the project do you expect to sort of achieve that modularity? Is that something you're going to sort of shoot for early on, or are you going to try to have a, a complete ledger first and then focus on modularity? Well, we're obviously focusing on having a feature complete version done first. Uh, but being said, at the API level, we already are looking at uh, some ways to bring things together. So we've been talking to people at IBM here in Japan, 
And uh, one of the things we want to try to do is create a trust, a cross chain transactions uh, between uh, Iroha and Fabric uh, at a fairly early stage. Uh, and we, we could do that with Sawtooth Lake as well. We just wanted to, uh, I mean, I don't know anyone from Intel here in Japan, but if anyone wants to introduce me, that's fine. That would be, <clears throat> that would be Mick and Dan. Yeah, uh, we can certainly uh, uh, point you to a contact at the right time. We've got offices in a few places, including Tokyo. Yeah, that would be great. Actually, I've never met uh, Intel employees here in Japan, so uh, I, I'm sure there's people somewhere. But uh, yeah, uh, you can uh, introduce me later. Any other questions? Okay, I think we're ready for a vote. So, Todd, you want to call a question? Yep, uh, sure thing. So we'll we'll walk through the list. Uh, Arno. Yes, I, I would like to add a comment, if I may, at the same time. I mean, if it were just for C++, I think the argument is a bit moot. I, I, you know, not that I discard the fact that there is a large C++ developer community out there, and that might help bringing them in. I, you know, I wouldn't want us to go down the route of, well, now we need to have a framework for every single programming language out there to attract as many people as we can. But I think the project has many other aspects that make it, you know, uh, interesting to bring it. So, yes. All right. Uh, ben? Ben, are you still there? Then you may be on. Oh. Sorry, sorry, I was on mute. Uh, I, I, I would vote yes. All right, great. Uh, Chris? Yep. Dan? Yes. Greg? Yes. Hart? Yes. Mick? Yes. Morali? Yes. Shihan? Yes. And Tamash? Tomas, she may be on mute. All right, it looks like uh, Tomas typed yes into the chat window. Great, uh, that passes unanimously then. Okie doke, great. <clears throat> Thank you. Thanks. Uh, we'll work hard and continue to try to make as much uh, progress as we can, as fast as possible. Super. So. Um, um, if you want to just sort of ping uh, on the CI, uh, what is it? Uh, I can't remember the name of the channel. CI something or other, and ask uh, Rye, and we can get you hooked up with Garrett and so forth. Okay, no. okay thanks. Next up is the Java demo, Java chain code. Hey, everyone. Uh, we'll go through you now. The Java chain code is merged into Fabric now, so it's pretty much uh, you know there to a level where people can start experimenting and then you know start developing chain code on Java. So we'll go through what are the tools required uh, for you to you know start developing Java chain code, and uh, it, it runs on JDK 1.8, and you will need a build tool. Uh, either Gradle or Maven is supported for uh, chain code development, and it's Fabric Pure. And uh, you need the shim client that uh, it is currently built inside Fabric and published to the local Maven repository. And uh, in the future, you will be using start using the, the Fabric Java SDK that is you know a work in progress and that will be eventually published to the Maven central repository. And uh, if you look at the features that are currently supported, see that it's, it's pretty much uh, basic get for them, the range for it and cable, and chain for the chain code invocation. TLS is, uh, you know, is currently being reviewed on Garrett, and ACL is a work in progress, and uh, uh, setting events from the uh, chain code is not yet implemented, but it will be, uh, you know. Uh, if you want to start developing uh, Java chain code, these are the steps you would follow. 
and I haven't so you can you know use any of the examples uh, there are a bunch of examples published inside the uh, fabric repository you know that features uh, that is you know <coughs> demonstrate one feature each and you will start copying that uh, uh, project and then extend the the chain code base class and then implement these three methods and <coughs> and uh, modify the build tool to call your main class and uh, we'll go to a demo I uh, prepared uh, you know sort of basic things uh, basically I've copied one of the examples uh, you know in the interest of time uh, and then created a folder and imported the my IDE and <coughs> I'll create a new class and then call it asset transfer. We will go through a simple asset transfer demo, basically you now debiting one account and then uh, crediting another account. So this will ex uh, extend the uh, chain code base class. And you would need to implement these three methods. And and basically have a switch case function you know, to run the incoming function and um, have this an in this method the point of view he's bringing it okay mm. let's understand it and then we should go with uh, our conviction this way or that way sorry yeah i'll continue now and this is a transfer uh, method you know when a transaction comes with transfer and this is what this is you know core flow that is going to happen it is going to get the balances of the corresponding account and then uh, debit from one account and then credit to another account and uh, the query method will return the balance of a particular account. So in this case, um, so whatever you know, account comes in, it will return the balance from it. And get chain code ID is uh, is a name that is given for registering and debug mode. And it will implement uh, the main method. So to start and uh, Listen for events after registering with registering with the PR. So this is pretty much what you have to do to you know to a basic uh, example, and you would need to <coughs> modify the main entry point, and let's start here in the dev mode on this window. I'm going to run it on the dev mode uh, in a in a production mode. You know, when you deploy it, it's going to bring up this Docker instance and then run it, run the chain code inside of it. But uh, here we'll we'll run the chain code and then see if it's registered to the chair. So what is this now doing? Is you know compiling the project and then uh, going to run it and when it runs this chain code will talk to the PR and then get itself registered and then gets into the uh, init mode uh, once we issue a init transaction. Uh, meanwhile I will, I will open another terminal and then uh, be ready to uh, start Okay, I made a type on the list. Yeah, bear with me for that. And I'll open another terminal now. And uh, basically, we'll initialize two accounts, uh, Alice and Bob, with you know 100 units of uh, asset, and another account with 200 units. 
see if it gets ready. Yeah. Looks like it is ready now, and it is registered with the PNR. Now, now we can start um, calling this, and uh, it is being initialized with uh, the 100 and 200. We'll do a query and uh, see it gets the current the set result, and we'll invoke a transfer transaction. This will transfer 20 units from Alice to Bob, and uh, we'll query the account of Alice again, and it reflects the new balances now, and Bob got the 20 units that is transferred. So this ends the demo. We'll get back into the presentation. Yeah, I have a question now. So uh, this transfer asset, asset transfer uh, project, uh, so is it communicating to a public ledger or uh, uh, is it sub uh, Yeah, it is, it is communicating with the local node and up here I have it running locally on my machine so it communicates to that. That answers your question. Or if okay. No, that's good. That's good. Right. Thank you. Uh, it's Vikas here uh, from CLS. Uh, I just have a question. This this uh, Java chain code is it based on the new version of the fabric, the version 1.0, or it's still on the old model? It, it is on the old model. Uh, it, it, it is not based on the you know the new uh, 1.0 architecture. But uh, from the chain code perspective, uh, yeah, the, you know the new architecture has a lot of changes on the uh, on how a transaction is being involved and how a transaction is being recorded to the ledger. But uh, from the chain code side, there won't be a lot of changes. But it is you know it currently works on the uh, uh, the the free 1.0 architecture, <laughs> whatever that is. And this is also checked, you said, is it checked in for uh, folks to download and use it? Yeah, it is currently uh, merged into the master for Fabric. So it is available in the uh, 0 0.6 branch and also in the master. Okay. So I had, uh, this is Greg, I had one question and two comments. Uh, so so one question is, I, I was curious about the TLS reference there, but let's come back to that in a minute. Um, my, my two comments, one was that, um, as a side note, uh, and, and for reasons I don't fully understand uh, the issues, but there, note that we've been having some problems with the choice of Gradle on, on some of the architecture supports on the non-X86 platforms. Uh, I guess it's limited. It's limited support on on other things, which actually doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, considering it's Java. But <laughs> apparently, there's issues with non-X86. So that's one comment. Um, we need. We might need to, uh, you know, rework that. I don't know if there's an alternate strategy or some other way to do it. Um, the other comment was that I would love to work with um, the, the the team that's working on this on getting support in Chain Tool for the. Um, for the, CC, for the CCI schema definitions to support Java. Um, if there's any interest in that, uh, please reach out to me. Um, and uh, lastly, uh, you know, to revisit that TLS thing, could you could you explain what you meant when you were mentioning that TLS is still a work in progress? I'm just not clear on where that even ties in. Why does the chain code platform need to care about TLS? Okay, uh, when a chain code runs on a uh, when chain code runs in a different environment, basically from a Docker container, it needs to talk to peer, and that communication has to happen over TLS. If TLS uh, is required. Okay, I got you. So now I know. Communication. Yep, I understand that. Yeah. Thank you. About the you know Gradle, uh, and I'm uh, not not being supported on the you know platforms other than X86. All right. The uh, the reason you know it is we are having difficulty is Gradle and Maven uses. Uh, you know, this OS detector plugin to figure out some of the things to run it on a native, uh, uh, you know, natively, uh, be it protocol or, you know, in case of TLS, it is going to need the uh, boring static SSL. So this is something, you know, we need to figure out how to, you know, achieve uh, on the uh, platform like uh, the PPT uh, and other stuff. 
but uh, with respect to Kyoto Buff, uh, we we will be you know able to move away from uh, the Proto C compiler to generate the Java classes soon. So yeah, that's something we're going. Right. Yeah. So I mean, if it so if the if we were to integrate the tool, part of the work would be helping me to define basically the um, the code emitter that can spit out the the Java language um, implementation of the interface, which should be relatively straightforward. Um, the other aspect would be, you know, we could we could possibly, um, you know, some of the protobuf compilation stuff that you're talking about could be integrated into that process. So it might it might make your life easier in that in in, in a couple different regards. We just have to come up with that initial, basically the code emitter. Exactly. We can take that offline though. It's it's. <clears throat> No, this is good stuff. So and, um, thanks again to <clears throat> DTCC and yeah, Fujitsu yeah. For, for doing this work. This is this is good stuff. So um, uh, we're at end of job, and um, uh, obviously we aren't going to get to the work group updates. But if the work group leads would each sort of post to the TSC mailing list, uh, you know their their current update, that would be much appreciated. I'm sure by everybody. And we'll talk to you all next week from China. Thank you all. Thanks, all. Thanks, Thanks. sir. Thanks, sir.